Welcome back to New Record Day. My name is Ron. If you are into two-channel audio, consider yourself an audiophile, music lover. Welcome home. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and show the bell notification who's boss, so that way you know when the next video drops. In today's video, I'll be reviewing the Oberon 7 sent to us by Lenbrook. Before we move on, I need you guys to know a couple of things. I have been talking to Dolly about my measurements and findings of the Oberon 7s, and they have been incredibly respectful and polite in their response. Perhaps more than any recent review that I've done, please watch the entire review before you reach a conclusion. We have a lot to talk about and I wanna make sure that everything is in the correct context. Thank you and enjoy the review. All right, folks, before we get started, today's show sponsor, Safe and Sound, offers a wide variety of bookshelf speakers, towers, and a huge selection of electronics for two-channel and home theater enthusiasts. They even offer fantastic financing options if that's what you need to take the plunge. Whether you are in the market for a new pair of towers, bookies, or a complete dream rig, you'll be able to play now and pay over time. Thank you so much for the sponsorship, Safe and Sound. We do appreciate it. All right, at $14.99 for the pair, the Dolly Oberon 7 is a two-way tower designed by the Danish audiophile loudspeaker industries. Standing 39 inches tall and weighing approximately 32 pounds each, the Oberons feature a one-inch soft dome tweeter and two seven-inch wood pulp and paper cone woofers, along with a rear port for bass extension down to the high 30s. The Oberon 7s are a two-way bass reflex design, and the specs rate these at 88 decibels, which means that bringing a decent amount of power to the party is gonna be important. With the Oberon 7s, I used a couple amplifiers with these speakers. These included the Yamaha AS2200 and the EX-M1 Plus from Kinky Studio. Both options drove the 7s with authority and noting their sensitivity, I would recommend getting some muscle for these guys to really wake them up. The Oberons come with a nice aluminum platform and the ability to install some spikes or rubber feet, which are included. Also, these guys come in your pick of four finishes, which is either black, light oak, dark walnut, or white. With these, which are the oak finish, I gotta say, I love the texture that Dolly came up with and the front baffle has a really clean, semi-glossy look. It looks really handsome. Really beautiful loudspeaker for sure. Last, the speakers come with grills, but unfortunately they are not magnetic. Either way, grills on or off, this is a very nice looking speaker and hard to criticize in this category. All right guys, so being up front, I did run into some questions with how the Oberon 7 sound pretty quickly. I could clearly hear texture and tone in bass, which is great, and I liked what I was hearing from the wood and paper pulp cone drivers that Dolly uses, it's what they're known for, and also bass sounded confident and quite robust all the way down into the high 30s in my room. This was all great. Lower mid bass sounded good and also offered a decent amount of resolution. Moving into lower mid range, things sounded pretty good in this band as well with a tad more emphasis on the chest, and it seemed to provide a little more bloom than what I would call linear. One thing that I should note, and this is important, Dolly doesn't recommend towing in these speakers, so face forward into the room is how I was listening to them. So where questions began is when I started focusing on anything above mid-range and upper mid-range. What I first heard that helped me identify that something might be going on is what sounded like an isolated top end or tweeter. It's by itself. And to be honest with you, I've heard this before, and while one might think, well, that would just mean that the tweeter is bright and that's why you're hearing it. That's not what was going on here. This is less about what we are hearing and more about what we aren't hearing. I know that sounds a little confusing. Hang in there. So listen up, guys. If you are only here to watch these reviews for subjective impressions, we're pretty much done here. I, I cannot stress this enough. I strongly encourage you to keep watching so we can learn a few things about speaker measurements and then run through Dolly's response, what they had to say about what I discovered and what I found 
in the Oberon 7s. It's really important and it might help you guys really understand a lot of things about speaker measurements and help you with your next speaker purchase. So the first thing that we're gonna look at is an impedance sweep. On the woofer side, I'm showing 6.5 ohms, and on the tweeter side, closer to five. Either way, the six ohm rating from Dolly is fair enough to agree with. Getting to the interesting stuff. Using Clio Pocket and a six millisecond gated window at 39 inches, I took some shots of the Oberon 7, and here's where we landed. The first measurement shows the frequency response. From 200 hertz to 1800, things look reasonably linear. Unfortunately, as we hit 1800, we have a dip in the response that results in a five to six decibel loss right at the crossover point. Right around 4200, the response levels out again, and what we can see is a pretty linear response from there out to 20K. Before the trolls have a panic attack and tell me that a one meter measurement is the problem, I also measured the speaker at two meters. Here is the deal, folks. That dip will not magically go away. It's there if you're one meter away, if you're two meters away, or even a football field away, the dip is going to remain. Yes, it does look better as you get further away from the speaker, but it's still there. I decided to investigate even further. So here is a two meter measurement with a 40 millisecond gate using a ground plane measurement. First, on access to the lowest woofer, then the middle of the two woofers, then the top woofer, and last, on access to the tweeter. So yes, while these ground plane measurements would require a correction curve, and I'm certainly not happy with what we see in the midband in general, what I'm looking for is consistent trends. In this case, that's exactly what we see. So in other words, one meter, two meters, six milliseconds, 40 milliseconds, we're seeing some consistencies. And that is the part that I need everybody to understand. My question is this, how can you have a tweeter and two woofers summing together perfectly in phase when the acoustic centers are so far away from each other? Think of it like this. That tweeter doesn't need to sum with just the top woofer. In actuality, the acoustic center is smack dab in the middle of both woofers since they are playing the same frequencies. To be specific, the actual acoustic center is approximately 10 inches from the center of the tweeter to the midpoint of the woofers. Using a frequency to wavelength chart, we can see some data that would suggest a more appropriate crossover point from 9.71 inches to 10.28 inches would be closer closer to 13 to 1400 hertz. Granted, this ain't exact, but it's close enough to a ballpark and clearly much lower than the 2300 hertz, which is being used by the Oberon 7. Giving credit where credit is due, the spectral decay on the Oberon 7 is very clean from 1200 and up. It's a shame we see that darn dip because if that wasn't there, this would have been an easy win in the measurements category. So let's take a look at the horizontal off axis measurements. In this example, I start on axis and I move a degree wheel 10 degrees at a time, which is expressed in the following colors red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. Remember, what we want to see here is a natural roll off from the on access point to the others. While we do see that for the most part, things get pretty funky right around the crossover point, which that my friends, I hate to tell you, I think it's audible. When I spend all this time chatting about the time domain, spatial cues, and clarity in the upper frequencies, I want you to hear what I'm rambling about. And I'm afraid to say that when I see this in a crossover, I'm worried you guys might not pick up all of those details with something like this particular example. Let's take a peek at how the sevens do on the vertical plane. In this example, I started with the mic on access to the tweeter, and then I moved it up four inches at a time, starting with what you can see in order as red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. What we do see here is the same hole we saw on access, but predictably, it ends up being a bigger hole off access. All right, folks, word for word, that is exactly what I want to say about these speakers, and it ultimately concludes this review. In addition to my review, I have been talking to Dolly about my findings, and it would be flat out disrespectful and dishonest if I didn't share some of the conversations we have had. I've been given permission to quote Dolly and share some of their thoughts and their own measurements as well, so let's dive in. First things first, 
Dolly was able to quickly replicate my findings using a Clio measurement system. By no means, this is an official measurement, but it works in this example. This measurement is a sigh of relief because it gives us some room for conversation and here's a direct quote from Dolly. We are not as surprised about your measurements as you might think. We see where they are coming from and we actually managed to find some measurements in our R&D files where there are many, many similarities with your findings. What happened next in the conversation is equally healthy as they went on to explain the why behind the voicing of the Oberon 7. They even shared some other measurements to express their position. Again, Dolly said, just to be updated myself, and by that also you, one of our audio engineers made a new measurement on the fly just using a portable Clio yesterday evening just to make sure that the findings are absolutely fresh and not coming from, say, year old prototype findings. So below is how it looks in the actual recommended listening position. Not on access, in fact, we recommend 20 degrees off access, no toe in. Correct listening height approximately one meter from ear height above the floor and approximately 10 feet listening distance in a symmetrical equal sided triangle setup. And here is the measurement that Dolly provided with this breakdown. This is where I can break bread with Dolly and say that that in room measurement does indeed look fine. And there is nothing here to get upset about. I consider taking my own in room measurements and I might still do that, but in the end, it's kind of a non-starter to a conversation that I feel has already landed in a good space. From my perspective, after the email exchange, tone used and respect shown by Dolly, what we have here is a competent company that understands how to measure a loudspeaker the way that I did it, and they did take the time to do so with the Oberon 7s. What happened after those measurements were made and observed, Dolly landed on a final voicing of the speaker based on what they subjectively heard in their listening room. I cannot and will not condemn them for the decision they made in their final voicing of these speakers. They made a choice based on what they heard and I can respect that much. Nevertheless, I am curious as to what their findings will be in other rooms, meaning their customers. Will the listener with the L-shaped room with all tile hear the results that what they heard in their listening room. Will the listener in the 16 by 20 acoustically treated room hear what they heard? That one hits a little closer to home because that's my room. And being honest and humble, I cannot say in full confidence that what they heard in their room is what I'm hearing in my room. I guess that's my takeaway here. Making a choice in voicing a speaker with this approach might come with some variables that are very difficult to predict. As for Dolly, thank you. Thank you so much for the conversation, and please know this. If every manufacturer treated reviewers the way that you have treated me, the world of hi-fi reviews would be a heck of a lot easier to navigate, and you have my respect for that. I hope we can work together on another speaker in the future, and I thank you for your kindness. All right, folks. That is my review of the Oberon 7s. I know this one was a little bit different from the norm, but I think you can clearly understand based on everything that we just unpacked that it had to be a little bit different from the norm. Either way, Dolly has my respect and I am so grateful for how they have treated me even though maybe we didn't land on the exact same page and that's okay, totally okay. I would encourage you to give the Oberon 7s a listen before you hit the checkout button. And if you have heard the Oberon 7s or you own the Oberon 7s, I would love to hear from you in the comment section down below. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video.